So welcome everybody. Um, thank you for joining us at our Meetup Live event. We have an awesome panel today. Um, I wanted to start with two things I saw come up in the chat so that uh, no one is waiting to hear that. Uh, the music in the Zoom thing is an option when you share your screen. Um, I'll make sure we put a tip on the blog so it comes out on an email soon or something. Um, but there's a little checkbox when you say share screen that says share computer audio. That's the key. Um, and then I have like a Spotify playlist in the background. Um, one other thing to note, because someone mentioned in case anyone else had this problem, a few minutes ago, we had a, a small error where you couldn't add a new online event venue. It was down for like, I don't know, some number of minutes, but it's back and fixed now. Um, so if you had a problem, just try again right now. Um, sorry about that. I'm sure our support team will, will tweet about that shortly. Um, but now to the really important stuff. Um, I want to introduce you to two amazing people and then give you a little information about the format of the session. Um, so I'm going to start off by, by letting Anise and Nina introduce themselves. So Anise, why don't you say hi? Hello, everybody. I'm an engineering director here at Meetup. I'm also co-organizer of a Google developer group based in Washington, D.C. So I'm really excited to be here today. And we're really excited to have you. Nina, do you want to say hi to everyone? I know you have fans in the audience. I've seen them shouting. Yeah, I guess so. Hi, everyone. I'm Nina Baltiera. Um, organizer of Bull City Beer Runners, and so we're based in Durham, North Carolina, um, in the United States, for those of you internationally out there. And our concept is that we go for a run, and then we drink beer, and sometimes we drink beer in the middle of a run. Happy to be here. <laughs> um, and just, I am Dan. I am a VP of product here at Meetup, and I am your sort of MC for this event. Um, let's take a look at what's coming up. So introductions, we did that. We're doing fantastically. Um, we're talking about switching to online events um, and we're talking to these two because they have experience doing that. They've had good events, they've had the, the usual fears of switching and we wanna talk through some of that so they can share their experience and hopefully make yours a little bit easier, maybe give you some good ideas. Um, we have a couple of Zoom etiquette things to address. One, um, there is the Zoom chat which I see people using and saying hello and asking questions. Um, that is fantastic. For specific questions you'd like us to answer in the Q&A portion at the end, there's also a little Q&A feature in Zoom. Uh, if you go to the Zoom menu bar, which is usually at the bottom or the top, depending where it anchored, uh, there's a little icon with two speech bubbles that says Q&A. And if you click that, you get this little format where you can submit questions. We're gonna pull questions from that list uh, to have our panelists answer at the end. So please do submit anything uh, as it comes up while we're talking, feel free to add there. Uh, two other wonderful people from Meetup, Janine and Cindy are gonna help me uh, pull from those questions and we'll get them answered for you. So without further ado, let's hear from the people who, who really matter here, our organizers. Um, I wanted to start out by um, asking Anise something that I came across in the middle of hosting my first event right now online. Um, what were you most afraid of or concerned about when you created your first online event and, and how did it turn out for you? I think the thing I was most afraid of is that people wouldn't want to come. Uh, mostly when you're hosting tech events, there's always this lore of like free pizza and beer and oh, you learned some tech thing. Um, so having it be online, I was kind of worried like, oh, well, are people still going to be as interested and want to come? You know, what about you? Was it a similar experience? Yeah, same. Um, I mean, we have beer. We don't usually have pizza, unfortunately. Uh, but I was, I was worried that people wouldn't be interested because the whole point they joined, or the whole reason they joined our meetup was to, you know, go for a run and then get a beer. And those are things that we can't do together, you know, in person right now. So I didn't think there would be much interest, but I was happily wrong. So does that mean, I mean, I'll ask you first since you're unmuted at the moment, but does that mean you had people show up? Was it like a quote, normal attendance or how did that feel when you went online? Yeah, it was, it was a pretty good group. We normally get, I would say like a good beer run has about 25 people and we consistently get about 25 people on our virtual happy hours. That's amazing. Yeah. Denise, how about you? What did the, did the turnout feel similar or I know it's hard to gauge on the Zoom as I'm looking at a Zoom. <laughs> yeah, it felt very, very similar. Um, I think the one main difference is that we got to sort of get people from other areas to come. 
um, which isn't typical because you have to like travel to a specific location, especially in the DC area, a lot of traffic after work. So you kind of see like the same small group of people each time. Yeah, the, the, the lack of commuting has been a highlight of, of, of the low light of this time for me, um, for both meetups and other reasons. Um, Nina, I'm curious, because you were, especially since you were an in-person, a very physically based event, um, what are some of the challenges you faced moving to online and how did, you, how did you overcome that? Obviously running together is not a thing we're doing, like you said. Right, yeah, that was the first challenge was taking an event that requires being together in person, running outside, um, and then also getting a beer together, taking that and making it virtual. So uh, the, what we did is we encouraged people to go for a run on their own um, or with whoever they're, they're isolating with. And then we all meet up on Zoom for virtual happy hours. Say, you know, go for a run, grab a beer, and then meet up on Zoom. And then we still just chat the way we always have. Um, just the, the chatting part is virtual instead of in person. So that was the first main challenge. And then the second main challenge was finding the right platform for doing that. The first week we tried Google Hangouts and it was a mess. And I think it could work for a lot of people. So I don't want to just discourage everybody from using Google Hangouts. But with you know, it's over 20 people, actually over like five people, Google Hangouts is really messy and hard to use. Um, so we used Zoom the next week and I have a free account but we got cut off after 40 minutes because there were more than two people in the Zoom. And so then we, uh, one of our members is letting us use his paid account. And so that's been working really well for us because we can do the Brady Bunch thing where you can see almost everybody at once. The Brady Bunch view is, is one of my favorite. Anissa, yeah. I know you were talking about um, sort of the, the lure of beer and pizza, um, but there's also like networking and the format of tech events I've been to, which feels like not as easy maybe online. How, how have you faced those challenges and, and how did you sort of work it out? Yeah, I mean, one thing is trying to start your event a bit earlier to allow people to kind of chat informally um, in that. Also, most of the time, um, we kind of have conversations on social media as well. So we kind of like tweet out, like this is the event. And then after the fact, I would like try to tweet out my slides if I'm a speaker. And then there can be this like uh, organic conversation happening on social media as well around the event or things people learned or questions about the slides. And I think that's something that's pretty cool because you're still kind of gathering together, but asynchronously at this point. That's really interesting. Yeah, the conversation is continuing other other media and other channels. Um, I I you mentioned some of this. Are there Anise? Are there any other lessons that you've learned to improve your next event, or what are you taking from event to event to continually improve? I think one thing that I learned is to share the meetup link. Um, just try to protect your event as much as possible, and like not directly sharing. Like let's say you use Zoom, not directly sharing that link. Um, just share the meetup link because it's only visible to people who have RSVP'd for the event. And then making sure you do a bit of prep. Um, so for our last event, we had a little prep session with the speaker and the co-organizers just to get together to feel comfortable. It doesn't have to be a big thing, but hey, can everyone, you know, log in? Can you share your slides to the screen? All right, we're going to spend five minutes doing this. So just doing that little bit of extra prep and what we would typically do for like in-person events, I think will really be super helpful, um, especially for these like tech-related meetups. For everybody here who was in doubt, uh, we did practice yesterday for a few minutes because uh, just using different tools to do this stuff. So my windows are oriented differently than normal. I'm not a professional webinar presenter. Uh, this has really been helpful. So I've double down on the rehearsing. Nina, I assume rehearsing is a little bit different when when you're going to go for a run on your own. But what's what, what have you taken event to event to improve it? Oh, man, not much, honestly, besides finding the right platform. It's just been, you know, go for a run, grab a beer and log in. Uh, I thought at first that I would need to come up with discussion prompts to keep things moving, but that ended up not being necessary. It's been pretty, pretty good, pretty relaxing. That's awesome. 
I have, I have always been, the meetup that I host is a beer and product meetup, and I've always been so scared about silence. So I come with questions. The, the thing we've taken from time to time is you read the label on your beer in some theatrical style, but I don't think we've ever gotten past two beers. So it, yeah, big fear, yeah. never realized. Yeah, whenever there's a lull, someone will say, what's everybody drinking? And you usually get, you know, a couple people are able to share and then we get on a tangent. So same thing. See, it's good to know that that's not just me. <laughs> I, for, this may be different, the two different format of events. So I'm really curious if this is different for like ground rules or how have you set up guidelines for your event? And if so, what have you set up? Nina, I'm especially curious since like me, you have a more open format, happy hour type of thing. For our in-person events, we definitely have ground rules, mostly for safety, running in the street and you know, drinking and things like that. Uh, but for, for these virtual events, we don't really have any rules at all. And we don't, we haven't needed any. Anise, how about you? Also, Nina, remind me, what's your, your typical group size? Is it 25-ish? Yeah, about 25. Anise, I'd be curious to answer for you and also your typical size. Yeah, so typically it'll probably be like around 40 people, maybe more. Um, and so there are some guards that we put in place, for example, not anyone should be able to just like share their computer screen during your event. Um, you want to keep those things to the host, uh, make your speaker a co-host so they can share their screen. Um, you may not want to let everyone just like put things in chat. So you want to kind of have some safety um, guards in place. And if you're using Zoom, one really nice thing is about a week or two ago, they added a new security panel um, at the bottom. You'll see like on your toolbar, take advantage of that. Use wait rooms. I mean, just use all the security features because of course, like people are home and they're bored. And if they can try to troll or ruin some online events, they will. Zoom bombing is a real thing. I would, I would avoid it if you can. Anise, what can organizers do? You mentioned like the waiting room and sort of getting on a little early. What are things organizers can do to support their members through the transition? Since I know it's everyone is coming up to speed to some extent on this. How have you handled that? I think one thing, if you're running a group that's not like super tech savvy, uh, for example, okay, I'm doing a tech group, but what if you're not and you want to be able to start taking advantage of online events? You could literally just host an event to get everyone up to speed on using your preferred video platform. Um, I think one thing that's scary is, is um, sometimes we overthink it and we don't have to overthink it. Just getting everyone together and saying like, this is a get on Zoom event, that would be amazing. I'm sure lots of people would appreciate it because they can do so many other things. Now they can talk to their parents or their kids or have a Zoom dance party, um, whatever it is. So. Um, I just kind of being there for the community, um, but also, like I said, make sure you're being safe and using those security features. Nina, any pointers from you for your group from the first few times you met or as each person has joined that you realize there's guidance you should provide overall? I love that idea, Anise, of having like a Zoom orientation um, event. That's a great idea. We try to put some instructions in the description in the event description for how to join um, pretty simple uh, certainly we've had folks with with problems trying to <laughs> trying to work the technology but most people just kind of talk them through it uh, the other thing is that we've noticed that people are not checking meetup to see what events are coming up because i'm sure they're assuming there aren't any uh, so we're sending reminders through you know instagram and facebook our pages there and uh, if we have contact information of certain you know, regulars who we're not hearing from, we'll reach out to them you know, by text or email. That's great. All really, really good advice. Nina, we were chatting yesterday and this came up and made me very happy. So I want to ask you, uh, what has surprised you most about your online events? What, mm. what nice perks have come out of going online? Yeah, the best thing I think besides people actually participating in virtual events is that uh, some beer runners who have moved away even years ago are joining our virtual happy hours. So each week we get folks from DC, Brooklyn, the Bay Area, Chicago, and they come and join every week and get to meet the newbies and the newbies get to put faces to the, the names of the OG beer runners who there are many stories about. 
Um, so it's been really, really cool to reconnect with them. And that was an unexpected bonus. And the same question, but I'm sure different answer, which is what's been surprising and delightful about this switch? One thing that was super surprising is how many people joined from outside of the country. Um, I had a former coworker who lived in Lagos, Nigeria, who actually stayed up super late to come join um, the very first event. And um, I don't know, that just meant so much to me in having people who are all over the world who are interested in looking for those connections that normally they can't get sort of real time. They're always like having to watch the YouTube video later if it is even recorded. Um, whereas now they get to be there and participating. So that was just like very surprising and um, honestly pretty touching. That's amazing. So one thing that I've said for myself has been a nice side effect for my group is that, is that like the community grew again, um, even within the same group of people. So it's nice to hear the same, similar, similar note from both of you, but different, uh, different touch points. Anise, because you, you were speaking a little bit more like panels and speakers, um, and you're talking about people getting involved in social media, how have you kept people engaged and how do you encourage their participation during your event? Has that been different, harder online than it was in person? Um, I guess I'll say it's sort of the sad truth of tech events. <laughs> people are pretty shy and quiet, even, even sometimes in person um, during the events, and it's kind of like, speak, share your thoughts, you know. Um, I feel that some people are more comfortable typing into chat and asking questions than maybe they are even um, in person. Um, I think the main thing is like, we're just kind of getting started exploring what online events can do for the community. So I have all these like different ideas of what I want to bring to the organizer team of what we can do, um, like, like fun ways to engage with the community or even some things that are just like practical um, that we can try to do to like reach out more consistently. I, um, this is so hard because I'm usually the quiet person at the tech event. And now I realize that. Thank you. <laughs> Nina, same same question to you, which is, do you have to, I mean, it seems like people are coming to participate, so it feels like they're more more likely in, but you mentioned prompting people for questions, talking about what you're drinking, anything else you have to do to encourage participation? For the virtual happy hours, not, not really. People just show up, and they're kind of our core group, so everybody knows each other, um, except for the ones who don't know the, the people who have moved away. Uh, so it, people feel pretty comfortable around each other, but uh, I also have created other events that aren't, you know, they don't mirror our usual events, like our, our beer runs where we go for a run and then drink a beer. I have other events too, like a scavenger hunt um, throughout the city that people can do on their own, but then submit kind of their, you know, their pictures or their results or um, other, other things that they can do, you know, but that's not synchronous with everybody else, but they can still participate in their own way if they're not available to Zoom for virtual happy hour, or maybe they're feeling shy or have Zoom fatigue and really like just can't do another Zoom, even though it's a fun one. The scavenger hunt is a great idea. And one way I know it works is my kids' teachers are doing that. So I feel like it's <laughs> proliferating on the online event and it's pretty entertaining. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. We're all, we're all looking at the world slightly differently now. So I like the, also the new observation angle. It feels, it feels very on. I, I, you, Anise, you mentioned that your attendees are often quiet. So the answer to this might be no, but I'm curious if you've received any direct feedback from your members about the new format or about your events as they move online. I think people are just kind of like, thanks for trying. <laughs> I mean, you know, not a ton of feedback, but just thanks for even trying to do something. Um, I think people honestly like really appreciate it. You know, have you heard anything? Uh, obviously you have your alumni, so I'm curious what they think too. I've, I've gotten some thank yous for, you know, creating events during this time and giving them ways to stay active, um, but not a ton of feedback overall, really. 
that is we we were commiserating a little bit yesterday but one of the things about being an organizer is sometimes it's a little lonely and quiet um so i'm glad we're all here together i can't see everybody but i know you're there do you ever uh you mentioned nina that you had a pretty good attendance and you mentioned this too nina first do you have more people at your online events is it about the same what's the barometer of like number of people per thing it's it's about the same. Um, it's pretty, pretty middle of the road. You know, I, I don't think we're going to be breaking Zoom anytime soon. Um, and there won't be any, you know, but there also aren't crickets during it. So. And you said you've been about the same size. Is this, is this better without a commute after work? I think it's slightly more people, um, which kind of makes me want to try to experiment with the time a bit. Um, we just kind of said, oh, after work time, because that's Kind of the default thing that we do um, but now i'm thinking maybe we could try a shorter one over lunch or maybe we could try something like 3 p.m or i don't know that I, I think there's ways that we could probably just experiment more and kind of a b test uh, what we're doing here with the scheduling of events that makes a lot of sense it's not just number of people at event it could also be number of people you've met total over the same time so monthly to bi-weekly more times. That's really interesting. I, I want to ask a little bit about, um, back to the, the rules. I'm looking at the questions that are coming in trying to, to balance time. So we'll switch to Q&A in a minute. And the questions are you know, directly to our panelists. I think this is similar. I don't want to use too many of my questions and not enough of yours. Um, but I would like to, I want to know what surprised you most or what you're most looking forward to now that you have this format. Uh, of online events, and if there's anything that um, you're looking for Meetup to do to help support you. You're both muted. That's a great that question, means. Dan. <laughs> That's a I'm, great question, Dan. I'm asking because uh, I see lots of people here asking for stuff, and I realize I never asked either of you what Meetup can do to help. It's okay if your answer is, I don't know, let me think about it, and we can let the other people suggest, but I thought I would ask. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I work at Meetup. I want. I want to hear from Nina. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would say definitely don't get rid of the virtual event option after all of this. I think it's great. Uh, I think there's been a, a need for it all along. Even though we get together in person, I think having you know even virtual beer runner reunions I think would be a really cool thing and obviously something that people kind of wanted. Uh, there's that also and i don't know if this is a security issue to be able to make them um repeatable recurring events that would be really nice because uh, going and finding the zoom link every time is, is just kind of tedious uh, those are the two things off the top of my head kind of practical but i'm i'm excited to see what happens in the future i think i'll i'll be planning more virtual events like another scavenger hunt and and things like that to just keep people connected in between beer runs, um, even though we have a lot anyway. <laughs> we just love each other so much. I got, um, sorry, my extra laugh there was because even though we've been talking about the beer runners and you saying beer run as a phrase just hit me for the first time now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm very slow, just want to let everyone know. Okay, so I wanna to pivot a little bit towards questions that everybody um, is asking from the audience. I want to answer one thing that Nina said first, since I do have an answer, which is the recurring events option is coming shortly. So you'll be able to set recurring events like you did before, but now with online events. So that, that is coming soon. And there was one other question that I saw floated like twice, which is worth answering. If you have, it was about time zones and a couple folks in Arizona um, who were like, we're special. You don't embrace our time zone correctly. Of course we should embrace your time zone correctly. Sorry, if we don't, I don't actually know that off the top of my head. I will take that back to our support team and make sure that gets into our queue to take a look at. We just started adding time zones. Um, also possible we don't know you're in Arizona. So I'll go check that out and get back to you. Um, I wanted to mention to the whole audience too, if your question, if we don't get to it right now, we have been taking these questions back and answering them on our blog. Uh, they take a little time, but we will put a recording of this and questions and answers there. So if you go to blog.meetup.com, you can look for the articles that comes out with the recording. You can also click to get the newsletter so that when we update the blog, we'll let you know. So you can also get updates on this stuff. Um, it seems, I think it's very useful as an organizer 
even though I'm involved with the company. So I would encourage everyone to go do that. Give me about 10 seconds as I scroll through this. You, you've been fantastic. You've asked a lot of great questions. So I'm just going back to pick a few and then I'll start serving them up. Question about the music. I'll get back to that. One other feature question since I'm scrolling by, is there a secure way to accept credit card payments as people check into a Zoom meeting or a better way to do that offline or prior? Uh, Zoom, I don't know. I don't think that's a feature in Zoom. You can ask for an event fee on Meetup. When you're setting up the event, turn on event fee and you can ask for that. So they have to pay before they get the link to your Meetup. So that's just a, a tip there. Um, so one question uh, Trish asked this, which is, I think Nina will, I'll send this to you and Anise, you probably also have input on this, which is, uh, I have done happy hours with eight to 10 people and found it's difficult with that many folks. So how are you handling 20 plus folks as far as like chatter noise and everyone trying to speak? Um, so I don't, I would, I'd be curious if they're using Zoom because I, I think when we switch from Google Hangouts to Zoom, there's something about being able to see most of the people at once on the screen. You can kind of see when somebody's like about ready to say something. So you can, it just kind of helps to have the visual cue. Uh, of course we do get a lot of people talking over each other, but, um, it's just kind of worked out. I'm sorry, that's not more helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, another option that you could do is try, if you're using Zoom, try the breakout rooms. Um, so the breakout rooms on Zoom are kind of like it's secret sauce. You can split up your group into multiple separate rooms. Um, I've even done this at work when I have like maybe 10, 12 people and I want two or three groups to discuss something. I can create a breakout room and you can either let Zoom divvy people up automatically or you can choose, okay, I'm gonna move this person here and this person here. Um, so if you're using Zoom, check out the breakout rooms. It's a really, really cool feature and it can like allow you to still have everyone together and you can choose maybe like 10 minutes in a breakout room and then all get back together or, you know, just have fun with, with it and be creative. I should also add that our happy hours are like an hour and a half long and people come and go during them. So we might get 25 people for the night, but they're not all, typically not all on at the same time. So that kind of alleviates the pressure of the, you know, talking over each other, the chatter. That is good to know. I'll also add, because I discovered this this week, uh, the New York City schools have stopped using Zoom and started using Google Meet for the most part. There is a Chrome extension that lets you the Brady Bunch, like the grid layout on Google now, which didn't exist a couple weeks ago. So if you're using Chrome and Google Meet, you can do the view like you have in Zoom. One other feature I found super useful in Zoom for the chatter was starting off with people muted and telling them to unmute and mute. So they have to learn that habit for background noise and other things. In Zoom, I know you can mute everyone. I don't think you can do the exact same thing in Google Meet. I think you have to go person by person. But um, personal etiquette from my meetups has been, hey, everyone try to mute when you're not speaking. And that tends to help. Another question. Oh, thank, we just, see, um, is it Othula asked about breakout rooms? So thanks, Anise. You, you got there faster than I did. Um, William asked us, what techniques do you use to welcome and make first time attendees feel more included within the group? And I'd like, Anise, I'd love to just ask you first, but Nina, obviously same question to you. Yeah, so making first time attendees feel welcome. Um, there are a couple of things you can do. Like every online event doesn't have to be so super structured. Um, one thing I try to do when I'm like hosting a Zoom meeting to get everyone talking is I'll try something simple like um, three words to describe your day, everybody. And then like everyone kind of types it in the chat. And then we might go through and say like, okay, Dave, wow, fascinating, mysterious, and gloomy. Tell us more about it. Like, um, it's just a fun way to kind of get everyone feeling like they're involved. So um, I would say Google, like simple icebreakers, virtual icebreakers, all those kind of things are fun. And like, finally, that content is super valuable. <laughs> Uh, with where we are uh, in the scene of things. So I would definitely try that. 
Nina, you mentioned specifically with some doing introductions for people who don't know other people, but anything else you've done to help welcome people back or into the group? Yeah, we haven't had any newbies uh, for the virtual events. We've had some folks express interest on meetup and coming to a virtual event for the first time, coming to a, their first beer run meetup um, virtually, but they haven't actually shown up. Uh, but I think the getting everyone's voice heard right away is incredibly important, both in person and online, is getting every like voice in the room heard right away. Um, it kind of you know, breaks the ice. And then also, you know, as the facilitator is, you know, ask pointed questions to specific people, um, including the newbies, so that they know that they're included and we want to hear what they have to say. I mean, that's what I do in person anyway, and I make sure I also introduce myself to anyone who's new right away, um, let, let them know, you know, I'm Mina, I'm in charge here, and then um, explain, you know, what, what the deal is, like how these events typically go. Um, and then usually I just ask them a lot of questions about themselves. And I think the same thing would be true for a virtual event if we ever got a newbie. <laughs> I've been, I've been curious about that too, about the, the first, the people who show up for the first time now, how different that is than the first time in all the other times. So I'm, I'm currently, I'm waiting for my first new, newbie via virtual only. Uh, Nina, there was a question specifically to you about, can you describe the scavenger hunts uh, a little bit more of an expanded description? What, what do you mean by scavenger hunt? Sure. So uh, every, right now we're doing an April scavenger hunt. So every week, in April, I'm posting a clue. I write a rhyme that's a clue for a Durham landmark. And they have a week to go for a run to or past the landmark and they have to uh, submit photographic evidence that they did it either on Instagram, Facebook, um, Strava, which is a, a running app, um, or just you know sending it to me some other way so that they can get credit. I haven't determined a prize yet. Uh, but we're in, uh, I'm about to kick off week three and the participation has been really fun. Um, I would love to be able to have each location have the clue for the next one, but you know, without being able to you know, be out and about all that often, I kind of figured I'd, I'd keep this as kind of low level as possible. So it's pretty low effort except for the writing of the rhymes um, and then going out and doing the run yourself. <laughs> I hope that's helpful. That was helpful for me. I kind of I want to do one of these now. Um, I have to find my own landmarks here. I happen to be in Ohio at the moment, so I need to learn the neighborhood a little bit better than my home neighborhood. Rachel asked this question. Anise, you were. Uh, I think I have an answer, but I'm curious if you do. I think you might know slightly more about some of the Zoom security features since you were touching on them. But um, we we are not Zoom employees. We just use it like you do. So we'll do our best here probably best to get this from Zoom. I'll try to add that to the answers when we put on the blog so you can have a link. But Anise, one of the questions Rachel said, should we put the password in the meetup event description or is that not safe? Where does it go then? Is it not necessary to use passwords for meetings? So I thought I'd, I'd give that to you and then we can all sort of give our best our best practice knowledge. And like I said, I'll, I'll get you a link to Zoom, Rachel. Yeah, it's probably best just to paste the link. The links kind of have the password embedded and put that in the online event field and then try your best not to share your zoom link as i mentioned on social media just share the link to the meetup event and then that way you can kind of protect yourself um, from like trolls and hackers and things like that i think so i was using google meet this morning and i don't know whether it's because of the type of meet account. But anyway, Google's, the way they do it is like, almost as in there's no waiting room, like you, the host has to kick off certain types of meetings before you can do anything in it. Um, so the security feature is a little bit different there. And I think that's gonna be true across solutions. On Meetup, we're seeing most people using Zoom. Um, so just so anyone who's not using it, we're not suggesting that's the best thing to use for you or that you have to use it. Um, just that we've seen a lot of it. So I'm trying to make sure that the crowd gets some answers to that. but. But feel free to ask about any platform. If we know, we will share with you or we'll send links to the answers that we can find. Our support team is like fantastic at that. Someone, uh, so we say everyone at the same time. Oh, sorry, I'm sorting through questions. There's, you, thank you so much for asking all these, by the way. It's slightly overwhelming, but wonderful to see this many people asking us stuff. So thanks again. Someone was asking about how to plan games together. I'll get back to you on that. I would like to also figure that out for my group. 
Uh, oh, just a quick follow up from Nigel, which was the breakout rooms. And do you remember it's part of the paid feature? Is it for an enterprise account or do you have that on a trial one? I don't know. That's a good question. I'll, <laughs> I'll try to, I'll find out if it's paid or not. But if you host a meeting, you can look in the thing and under more and see if you see that option. But, but I'll, I will confirm. Yeah, I will look also. I'm not sure. I see it right now, but it's because I'm on our, our account. So it's very hard to tell you that. Let's go to a few people ask, uh, Nina, I don't know if you're sharing slides or presentations, but Anise, I think in your case, that might be more the norm, like we are here. Someone asked, like, how do you how do you deal with switching between like PowerPoint and the thing? How do you know how to run the, the visuals for your meeting? And how have you gotten better at that basically in this short time? Yeah. So if you're on a Mac computer, <laughs> sorry, I mean, I don't use Windows, but I'll just say there's probably this, a similar thing on Windows too. But if you're on a Mac computer and you're sharing your screen and you're sharing your desktop, you can have your slide deck full screen taking up everything. And then you click H. I know it's totally arbitrary, but then that will allow you to switch to any running app. So typically what I do if I'm presenting something and I want to like show some code and then come back to my slides, I kind of have everything up full screen and then I can click H and navigate in between them without ever stopping um, the screen share and it works pretty smoothly. Um, but I'll just add one note is like give yourself permission to get it wrong a lot. It took me a long time to get to this point where I'm really comfortable like literally dozens and dozens and dozens of presentations. So just feel like it's okay. Little by little, don't expect to like nail it all in your first online event. Definitely true with the pressure. Have, Nina, what do you think? Yeah, I just wanna echo that last point. We're, we're not sharing slides or any, any kind of audio visual, anything uh, besides ourselves, um, but, I think just trying something and just creating an event for your group while they can't meet in person is so appreciated, even if they're not saying it all the time, um, that, yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just, just try it and then you know, make some changes the next time or don't if it works out great. One thing that's been hard for me, especially here, we're using like a webinar style software. Somebody asked, about using GoToMeeting and other pieces. If you're using a like virtual event thing where it's speakers talking to a room, I actually can't see all you great people right now, um, which is different than if you're just hosting a regular Zoom and you can see everybody. So one thing in the regular Zoom situation is managing seeing everybody's faces versus seeing the content, especially if you're presenting. And I especially say give yourself permission. That's a really weird balance now to try to engage with everybody and look at them and also pay attention to what's happening on your screen. Um, it's why you probably see my eyes, eyes darting everywhere, which is that I'm looking at a chat, looking at you, looking at the slide, the time. So um, I will echo what Anise said and really double down with Nina saying, give yourself permission to figure it out. Your members are there to help for the most part and be a part of the community. So also you can enlist them in helping. That's what I've been doing with my meetup. And it's kind of been funny. I've messed up a whole bunch of times. So that's <laughs> feel free to mess up, I guess. I'm gonna grab one or two more questions and then make sure we're respecting everyone's time and get you out of here on time. As I said, if there's a question in here that I'm missing as I'm scrolling through, we go through, look at them all, make sure we have answers to them. We'll post it in the follow-up with this as well as a recording in case you had to sign out early or you're just getting here late. And again, if you go to blog.meetup.com or meetup.com slash blog, you will get that information all the time. Uh, free version. Thank you so much for thanking us. There's a lot of thank yous, by the way, Nina and Anise. So in case, in case you didn't already know you're awesome and I haven't told you enough, you are great. Oh, uh, somebody asked, BPM asked about, is there a way to see everybody at the same time in the meetup? I think, uh, depending, you can chime in if I'm answering the wrong question. If it's depending on the software you're using, that is just different. On Zoom, there's like a grid view icon. On Meet, you have to install a grid view extension to see it in Chrome in i think i was using go to meeting in another one same deal i had to find the little place to show them all but most of the tool questions i literally have been going to our support team we've been looking for the authoritative article 
at that company and then posting it. So I'll come back to you with an answer on that. The, someone said they're a little late to the party. I'm just catching up on their thread. Oh, just someone was asking about, I'm curious, you both mentioned different formats of events and these you've been to several tech events, both as a presenter and a participant. I'm curious what formats you have taken from real life and already moved into the online realm versus which ones you've seen in person and haven't yet translated. And that certainly goes for you as well, Nina, but and he's just curious from the tech side first. Um, yeah, so first the typical speaker one, um, but shorter. So normally we might like be hanging out for two hours or more. It's a bit shorter now and try to keep it for an hour. Zoom fatigue is real. So just, you know, keep the meetings a bit shorter. I'm also gonna be speaking on a panel. So like this, this is panel style. Uh, we brought that to an online event and I'll be speaking at another panel at the end of the month about like remote working tips. So I think this is kind of a cool time to share like practical things for your community. Um, I have lots of ideas for what we can try to do for the community that are like practical in nature, um, but also still semi-related to um, tech. For what are you looking us, to take online? Yeah, for us, it's a little different, but I do want to say that a lot of what we do is to support the local businesses in the area. So um, our one, one run starts and ends at a brewery and they, are, they sponsor us and they've been having pallet sales, drive through pallet sales. Um, so we are trying to boost you know, all of our members going to those pallet sales and you know, continuing to support the business because we give them a lot of money every week by running there and then drinking there and they can't count on that anymore. Um, so, so we try and um, have everybody support the local businesses as best as we can. Uh, the same thing is we have a, a weekend burrito run. So we go for a run and then we go to this bar. It's, it's also a bar, of course, um, but they serve the best breakfast burritos. So uh, they're doing that on the weekends now. So my co-organizer and I did a group burrito order and we delivered the burritos to our members' doorsteps. Um, so we're just trying to find new ways to support the local businesses that that we already support and to continue to support them um, without you know doing our, our regular our regular thing thank you that is both wonderful to hear and i think a great note to end on which is all of us i can say confidently everyone not just the panelists all of us are here to keep our communities together and to support our communities meetup is here to help all of us do that so I'm so incredibly honored to be able to come to work and do that every day. I'm so thankful that all of you are here with us and are here supporting your members. This has been fantastic for me to learn from you, Nina and Anise. Thank you so much on behalf of me, Meet Up the Crowd. Um, and for everybody here, thanks for coming. We will be doing these weekly. We have one next week that'll be posted soon. Recording from this will be online. Have a fantastic afternoon and evening. Stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you, Nina and Anise. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. <laughs>